Hi, I'm Chazan Stephen Storr, and you're watching Taped with Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I wanna watch Monday Night Football! Forget about Monday Night Football! There's no other thing we're gonna watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug! Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. Oh, everybody talk about Doug. Shalom, welcome to Taped with Rabbi Doug. Glad you could be with us today. I am so honored to have on the show today the senior Jewish funeral director in the state of Illinois. And if he's not the senior, he's equal to someone else who's close to his age, Seymour Mandel. Welcome to the show. I am so glad to be with you today. Um, first of all, Funeral direction in Chicago has changed over the years. Uh, uh, big corporations have bought many of the, the funeral homes in Chicago. Uh, many people have retired. You're still in the business. First, how long have you been a funeral director, first of all, and, and a licensed funeral director? Since 1956. Since 1956. And how many generations in your family had been funeral directors before you? Well, my... My grandfather, my father and mother, uh, and, and, and you, me, and now my son. And now your son too. So that's generations uh, of, of funeral directors. When your grandfather went into the business, was he an apprentice to a different Jewish funeral home that was already in existence in Chicago? Or was he one of the first? How did it work? Were there Hevra Kedishas, Jewish burial societies, and they did all the funeral direction? How did it all start in, in, in funeral home business in the Chicago area and funeral direction for Jewish families? Well, as far as I know, uh, he immigrated to this country in, in the early 1900s. From where? <clears throat> He was, he was born in uh, Russia, uh -huh. I believe the town of Drohichin. Okay. And uh, he actually worked as a shomer, a sexton in, uh -huh. a, uh, in a synagogue on the northwest side. So he was a very religious man? Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, he... Uh, northwest side, are we talking about northwest Humble side. Park area? What was... What was the, that area? Uh, Division Street. The Division area. Street, Humble Park area, all around there. A little further east. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He was at uh, uh, Division of Western. Uh, yeah, right, right, just a few blocks east. Okay. okay. And uh, as I heard the story, he by the way, my grandmother grew up there. She grew up in that area, also in the near north side there. Okay, go on. Uh, as I understand it, he saw a couple of Jewish funerals and he didn't care for the way they were handled and he said I could do a better job and he opened a little chapel uh, actually almost downstairs to where they lived at the time. Did he find a partner or was he by himself? No, originally he was by himself. He was at 2306 West North Avenue. Wow, you even know the address. That's so cool. And then he... So that's 2306 is between Damon and Wester. Yeah, right. it was just uh, just west of Oakley. Mm -hmm. And um, and I don't know the the exact uh, course of events, but he went into partnership with an established funeral director, Joseph Hartman. Joseph Hartman. Who uh, who I don't think I've ever heard of. Maybe the name has passed by me and I don't remember. But I didn't know that. Okay. Well, he. He was with him for a while, and then he decided to break off on his own. What was your grandfather's name? Sam Gratch. Sam, Sam Gratch. So people who will remember uh, the old funeral home signs in Chicago, the name Gratch was on those funeral home signs for years and years and years. And that was your grandfather. Right. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, hmm. Your mother's father. My mother's father. Mother's father. And he died. So he separated. He separated from Hartman. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hartman later went on to uh, merge with the Miller brothers, and it became Hartman and Miller. And they were first on Division Street, and then also on Lawrence Avenue and Albany Park. Uh -huh. I, I 
30. Don't remember hearing of them either. That's my age difference or, or so, but very interesting. And it was 3021 Lawrence. Now, now Gratch kept the name in the business, obviously, because we know that it went on for years in, in mergers and so on and so forth. Uh, but it was called Gratch Mandel, wasn't it? No, it was Gratch Undertaking Company. Gratch Undertaking Company, uh huh. Later? Yeah. Well, then he died in 1930. Mm -hmm. And my mother had help, was helping him in the business, and she tried to keep it running, but you had to have a licensed funeral director. My father, at that time, was a pharmacist, mm -hmm. had a drugstore. What was his first name? Arthur Mandel. Arthur Mandel. He had a drugstore on Grand and Harlem, Hamlin, Grand and Hamlin. Grand and Hamlin. And my mother said, you have to go to school and get your license. And he did, and then he worked in the business. And then in 1940, they remodeled the chapel and expanded it on Division Street, which was 2235 West Division. And they put up a big sign, Gratch Mantle Chapel. That's when it became Gratch Mantle. And that's, that's the name I remember first. And so they were there until the neighborhood changed? How did that work? No, it was, no, they were there, um, hmm. they were there until the 60s. Until the 60s, yeah. until the 60s. So, um, so Gretsch Mandel eventually um, became part of Pizer, I remember, or was it also, now there, there were so many funeral homes. When I was young, the funeral homes, there were three of them. I guess, or two of them that merged together. And this was when I was young, I remember. There was Weinstein Brothers on Devon, and that one I remember. And then there was original Weinstein and Sons, and I remember, and, and, and that was also Pizer merged with them at the yeah. time. I, I don't remember how that worked, but I remember the original Weinstein and Sons, there was one where there's a Walgreens now on Peterson Avenue near Lincoln. Right. And I remember there was one where there's a retirement home across from Clinton School on Granville in California. Uh, and that's what I remember, and I remember, of course, the Skokie, the Skokie Pizer. I remember that. None of them exist anymore, but I remember all these all these buildings when I was young going to funerals at them. Um, tell me how that all worked and where that all went, went along. Well, Weinstein Son was on Roosevelt Road. Uh, Roosevelt and... Uh, I don't remember. Okay, that, that's that okay. Was. And uh, Myron and Ted Weinstein. So that was the west side. Right. Myron and Ted Weinstein were related to the original Weinstein, mm -hmm. and they started their own firm at 3600 Roosevelt Road. And that was the brothers, <clears throat> right? Weinstein brothers. Uh -huh. They later... Uh, I remember Ted, and I know Joel, and I, I you know, I... Joel was Myron's son. Right. Uh, they built the chapel, 1300 Devon Avenue. Mm -hmm. Myron was such a nice old man. I love that man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very nice. And, and so, his son, Joel William, mm -hmm. is still living. He's not working. But, right. Uh, I, I, the reason I, I, I had a relationship with Joel William is my family uh, has um, plots in Beaker Holing, uh, which is next to the uh, office at uh, Waldheim. And Joel was the administrator of the Bicker Holing plots. So my great grandparents and stuff are buried there. So Joel was the one who kept those records. And when I got older, because my grandfather had passed and they were in his name, he had passed them down and put my name on them. So I actually am the owner of those plots technically, uh, because Joel did that before he retired. It's, a, it's an interesting, it's an interesting story. So when they opened up on Devon, they closed on Roosevelt Road? Mm, not immediately. Not immediately. Uh, West Side hadn't quite changed yet. No. Uh -huh. Now, originally, as far as I remember, the first Jewish funeral director in Chicago was by the name of Hamburger, and they were on the South Side. <coughs> they were German Jews. And then uh, Firth, the original... Jules Firth. Well, the original Jules Firth. Oh, he's a, is he a grandson of... The, the Jules Firth that passed away uh, right. a decade ago or so? It was his grandfather. Uh -huh. <coughs> they opened up on the south side, eventually on uh, 47th Street. Uh -huh. And um, uh, 
Jules' son, Lee Firth, ran the business. And then his Which son... Is the father of the Jules Firth I knew? Lee? Yes. Uh -huh. And then his son uh, got into the uh, business as well. <clears throat> now, eventually, with mergers, he also... I remember he was working mainly out of, um, on, was it Broadway? Was there a, a Pizer on Broadway? And that's yeah. where Jules Firth worked out of, I remember, in my young years of memory. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting. So how did, how did <coughs> Branch a... Mandel get on the name board with, with, with those funeral homes? When did that whole merger take place? Uh, Pizer had the, uh, Pizer needed executive help. Uh, they merged with my father. Was there, a, was there a funeral director named Pizer? I never knew anyone named Pizer at the, the original, time. The original uh, owner. Owner, founder, <coughs> started in 1916. <coughs> Excuse me. He, uh, he originally, I believe, was a jeweler. Went yeah. into the funeral business. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, I'm trying to remember how course of events. But Pizer needed executive help and approached my father and my mother who were working and my brother Gene uh -huh. who was working also and they merged the firms in 1952. And, that's okay. Go ahead, have some water. So um, the firms were merged and so Pizer, Grant Mendel were all one company following that and this was um, uh, on, was this just at the time, and you'll, you'll correct me because I don't know, uh, Broadway and, and Skokie at the time, or where, where were they all located at that time? Well, Pizer was at 5206 Broadway, uh -huh. and they bought out the Jaffe and Albert firm. Which was another was, funeral home? Right, and this, they were, their north side location <coughs> was <coughs> Kitty Corner on Broadway, and Pizer bought out Jaffe and Albert, which is at 5145 Broadway, which is diagonally across the street. Uh -huh. So, in the 50s, there was the two chapels on Broadway. Pizer had a chapel at 704 South Pulaski, uh, Gratch Mandel at 2235 Division, and Southside which was 6935 Stony Island. And uh, uh, the South Side, which still has a strong Jewish community, especially in the Hyde Park area, uh, and then when you move south in the Homewood Flossmoor area, does not have a Jewish funeral home there anymore. Interestingly enough, um, uh, that did not survive as far as a, a, a business out that way. But um, in, in the moving north of everything, um, when Weinstein, opened up in the Wilmette area, and Pizer opened up in the Skokie area. Uh, soon uh, the, uh, uh, the, the original wine sign had closed on, on Peterson, the, uh, uh, the original wine sign on uh, California Avenue in Granville had closed, and no, that the, was originally Pizer. Oh, that was originally a Pizer. That, okay, it's the, I, that's how mixed up I was. That closed, and then the uh, Broadway uh, funeral home closed, the one that was left. Um, everything had moved north. The last mm -hmm. one, I think, to close in, in, in that part of Chicago was Weinstein and Devon. After Myron died a number of years later, they closed that funeral home as well. Uh, what do you attribute the, the changes, because there's still a Jewish community, certainly uh, in the Rogers Park area, which was close enough to the uh, area mm -hmm. on um, of the Devon of the Devon office um, of of that group, um, and and everything changed, and they closed, and people moved, and new funeral homes opened up. What what do you think? Was it number one? Was it the age of the funeral directors retiring? Was it the changing of the neighborhoods and moving west and moving north, or was it just because uh, people wanted more not modern facilities? What do you attribute it to? It was a changing neighborhood. Uh -huh. uh, Weinstein. And Devon, they uh, built the chapel in Walnut, mm -hmm. on <coughs> Skokie Boulevard. <coughs> and that was really the end of the building of uh, the Jewish funeral. Yeah. So 
now all those companies, um, though some carry carry names of the former companies, uh, were were all sold out to uh, a conglomerate. Uh, I think they're called SCI or something like that. And and new <coughs> private Jewish funeral homes, including people from your family, opened up funeral homes uh, to be family funeral homes. And some directors actually just became directors and started doing their own thing, uh, who were in the business back in those days <coughs> with, uh, with the conglomerates that are now existing when they were owned by families. Um, are there any other families besides your family, any other families still in the funeral home business, in the Jewish funeral home business in the Midwest? Not that I, not that I haven't mentioned. So really, very interesting, very interesting. Tell me, what has kept you in the business all these years? What is, what is someone, you know, people say, uh, oh, it's a morbid business, or people say it's a, 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 not a business I'd ever want to go into. What is a person like you who, for most of their life, worked in the funeral home business, worked as a funeral director, and you still do it today. Certainly you don't work the load that you used to you love work, but you still do it today. What keeps you in the business and keeps you interested in serving Jewish families in such a way? You get a certain amount of personal satisfaction <clears throat> out of helping families at the time of need, and it's, it's been my occupation since 50, 1956. And, um, yeah, no, I understand yeah. it. And do you feel like the the legacy of you um, being a funeral director, passing on to your son, maybe one of your grandchildren one day would do the same? Does that give you uh, nachas? Do you get joy from that to see that my grandfather passed it on to my mother's family, which became my father's family, which became me, which went on to my son. Does, does that give you nachas to see that this, this, this legacy has passed on from generation to generation? Lador Vador, as we say. Uh, very proud when I can introduce my son mm -hmm. to a family and say, this is my son, he, he'll take care of you, he knows mm -hmm. what to do. Um, tell me, in, in, in the funeral home world, um, we hear of, of different things. Back in the day, let's talk about in the 50s when you started in the business, um, did everyone have a tahara? Did, did, was, it, was it not, uh, what is your choice, what you want for your funeral for your loved one? Was it like, did the Hever Kedisha automatically come for everyone? Did everyone have a tahara? Did everyone wear shrouds in their casket? Did everyone use a kosher wooden casket and stuff? How was it, what was it like in the 50s when you started in the business and took over with your parents? Well, there was no universal tahara. The, uh, the uh, non-observant Jews uh, didn't care about it. For a time, my, my folks, chapel, just about everybody had a tahara, it was just in tahara, mm -hmm. shroud. <clears throat> and eventually, it, it waned and, mm -hmm. and people became more uh, acculturized to the, mm -hmm. to the uh, secular world. Secular world. And they chose not to. Uh, there's always been a, a part of the Jewish community who went for cremations, which is really uh, not a Jewish thing. Not a Jewish thing. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so let me let me ask you this: In your years, being the senior, and you're not that old, but you're you're the senior funeral director in Illinois in the Jewish community. What famous people might you have served their families? That our viewers, uh, who know the the, the, the Jewish community and the history of the Jewish community, might know. Who co who comes to mind that would be well known that you served their family in, in arranging their funerals or, or or taharas or whatever the case might be? Well, I think probably one of the most well known uh, um, individuals. Was uh, Mike Todd? Oh, you did Michael Todd, who is buried in Waldheim in the Silverman Weiss section of Waldheim on Roosevelt Road. That's uh, we've actually featured when we did a famous graves at Waldheim show uh, with Erwin uh, uh, Lamp of blessed memory. 
uh, and uh, his uh, associate David, who worked with him at the time, uh, we did those and we showed Michael Todd's grave. Of course, uh, uh, his uh, Michael Todd is in parentheses that in, in quotations because that's not his real name. And you can see he's buried right next to his parents there in, in Waldheim. That's in the, in the Dorchateau Cemetery. Uh huh. Very good. Don't very ask good. me how I remember. I, that. That's that's amazing because <coughs> that, those two entrances that come off the two main entrances that come off of Roosevelt Road into that section, there are like nine or ten or eleven different cemetery names of just little sections throughout that uh, that small area there, and uh, right next to the Displains River. Also, you'll notice in the summertime often it floods into the into the cemetery itself. It's quite an amazing area and. Uh, history and my family, my father's uh, no. paternal uh, grandparents are buried there and uh, uncle and my uh, my in-laws are buried there uh, uh, also. So that's a really uh, uh, a very uh, special place to my family as well, um, that, that particular section. Um, where are your grandparents buried? Who were the original funeral directors? Where are they? Uh, the Gratches are buried on the Cemetery of Congregation of Israel, Israel on Displains Avenue. I know it right before Greenberg Road. Exactly. Right before, I know that section very well because as many people know, for 20 years I was one of the rabbis at Ezra's Israel, so I, I certainly officiated a number of funerals there also. Um, tell me this, what do you think uh, the industry uh, uh, will do in the future. Do you think that it will expand with more funeral homes or do you think it will shrink sort of like it did throughout your later years in, in, in the uh, family business uh, and, and, and a lot of mergers? How do you think that's going to go in the future uh, with your opinion of course in, in the Chicago area? No, I, I, well, I don't see uh, the uh, publicly held companies expanding any. I think uh, individual funeral directors who have spun off of those uh, conglomerates uh, expanded into their own <coughs> into their own practices and they uh, became part of other other funeral homes in the city. Um, and then there's attrition. Mm -hmm. We talked about Jules Firth. He's no longer with us. He passed away. And uh, uh, Hartman's are gone. Miller's are gone. Uh, a lot of the Weinsteins are gone. Mm -hmm. With the exception, Joel Williams mm -hmm. is still is still healthy, thank God. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, well, it's, a, it's an no, it's an interesting thought when you think about that. A lot of them are gone, and uh, the businesses that have opened, some of them. Uh, and stuff are, are that are aren't part of conglomerates are new families who were not part of those original families. Um, we are here with Seymour Mandel. Seymour is the senior Jewish funeral director in the state of Illinois. We're going to take a look at some great pictures and uh, talk a little bit more with Seymour. So stay with us here on Take with Rabbi Doug. We'll be right back. COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective. Millions of doses have already been given in the United States, and these vaccines have the most intensive safety monitoring in U.S. history. If you have questions, get answers from a reliable source. CDC.gov. So we're back here on Tape with Rabbi Doug looking at pictures of, this is first of all, such a cool picture. This handsome guy, Seymour Mandel, my guest who's with me. Uh, tell me who this guy is that we're looking at. That's Sam Gratch, Samuel Gratch, my mother's father. So this was your grandfather who was the original family funeral director. Correct. That you told us about. How amazing. And I'm, I'm going to go a generation down now, if I may, uh, as we look ahead here. And this right here is uh, Arthur Mandel. Is, is this your father? Yes. This, he was also a handsome looking guy. No wonder you look so good. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Look at that. Very debonair, huh? Very debonair. I, I, I love this picture. This is one of my favorite pictures you have. Um, it says Milton Mickey Mandel. Who is that? It's my father's brother. That was your uncle. And this picture, tell me where this is and what this is of. Is that a hearse? That, 
it was a Cunningham. I'm not sure if it was a passenger car. I think it was a passenger car. A passenger car, but it was used like uh, at funerals, right? right? And that and was in front of the chapel. Which was where? On Division 2235 Division. 2235 Division. And this picture is from 1922. This is so amazing. So amazing. I'm, I'm in awe of this picture. So I want to move on. Tell me, who are these people in these pictures That's here? That's me and my parents. That's you. That sharp guy up there. Oh, my, my goodness. That, that's your bar mitzvah? No. No. No, no, you're older there. No, but that's a, that's a beautiful picture of you and your parents. Uh, uh, two generations of funeral directors right there. Um, and then here, I know, because I recognize this guy here is your late nephew who was a funeral director in Chicago. Um, this is Larry Mandel. That's your brother, your brother's son. And this is your brother over here. Is this correct? No, the, on the that's, left? This, yeah, on the left. The far left is Seymour. That's Gene. And that's his brother, Sid, who uh -huh. did him in the film. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. What is this? It's a replica of a 1932 Prinsling hearse. Dad and I saw this at the National Funeral Directors of America convention in McCormick Place two years ago. It was in Chicago. Oh, thank you for sharing this with me. And this right here is Lloyd Mandel. This is... Uh, Seymour's son. He is the proprietor of Mitzvah Memorial Funerals. And uh, uh, how long have you been in the business? I went to Worsham College in 83 and worked at Pizer and then uh, got my license, went to uh, in 1989, started a storefront funeral business on Dempster Street uh, at 3939 Dempster, also turned into a Walgreens like the what, uh, original Weinstein. Uh, 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 and then I moved up to 4750 Dempster Street next to Barnum and Bagel. And uh, there was just uh, three Pizer Weinsteins, two Weinstein brothers, and Lloyd Mandel Levia funerals. And, and you, then, you left the business for a while, moved to Florida, and then came back and went back into the business again. Are, are you happy doing this business and taking it from generation to generation? It's, it makes the it's a hard business to be in, but the fact that you're doing it the way your your father, your grandparents, your great grandfather did, it makes it extra meaningful to do. How it. nice! How nice! Do you think? Do you think your son? I know your son is in the room with us today. Uh, one of your children. Uh, do you think that one day uh, you might want to go into this business too? Uh, it's mixed. But you never know. You never, never know. know. You never know. All right. Well, I can't tell you how interesting this was. We were able to meet the next generation and maybe the future generation in, in funeral direction and your family passed down from your grandparents in the early 1900s. It's really an amazing thing. Seymour, I want to wish you many more years of good health. Zygesund be 120 at least, uh, at least 220 years old in good health. And uh, I hope you never have to retire. I hope that you enjoy doing what you want to do, have your free time when you want it, but, uh, but you are a legacy in the state of Illinois for the Jewish community, and I wish you all the best. I want to thank all of you for being with us. Remember, you can check out our website, www.tvrabbi.com, where you can also see former shows on the web. If you want to email Seymour or find out anything more about uh, this tremendous man, you can email us at info at tvrabbi.com. I will forward it to him, and I know he'll get back to you. And we hope to see you next time right here on Take with Rabbi Doug. Shalom. Rabbi Doug. Gonna see Rabbi Doug. Gonna see Rabbi Doug on the TV tonight. This has been a Taped with Rabbi Doug production.